Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for coming out here on an incredibly cold <laughs> Saturday evening. I know it's not easy. Um, we have an incredibly special evening uh, tonight. We are so thrilled to welcome the Haas brothers, Simon and Nikki, along with their incredible guests from South Africa. So we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us and being open to talk with us after an incredible afternoon at the beading workshop. We held a beading workshop in this room. There may be some little beads around still on the floor, um, but our guests got to uh, make these incredible necklaces. So uh, just a very quick primer. In 2014, the Haas brothers uh, began collaborating with Monkey Biz, which is a nonprofit income generating bead project that works with craftswomen from the Kalicha Township in South Africa. Um, and together, the Haas brothers and the Haas sisters, as they have lovingly begun to be known, uh, began creating these expressive, fantastical, and incredibly joyful uh, collection of Afriques. And the series of this beaded flora and fauna can be seen upstairs in our exhibition, Beauty Cooper Hewitt Design Triennial. So of course I have to give some thanks to our funders and the very generous support that we received from Edward and Helen Hintz and Madeline Rudin Johnson. The exhibition is, uh, we also received additional funding that was provided by Amita and Pernindu Chatterjee, the August Heckscher Exhibition Fund, Marjorie and Edgar Macinter, May and Samuel Rudin Family Foundation, the Aaron Krantz Fund, the Horace W. Goldsmith Foundation, Rockwell Group, Esme Uzdan Exhibition Endowment Fund, and the Consulate General of Finland. So thanks to all of those people for uh, making the exhibition itself possible. And I also do want to thank our very dear friends and uh, colleagues at the Design Gallery R & Company, uh, who have worked tirelessly uh, behind the scenes to help bring these wonderful objects and artists to Cooper Hewitt. So thank you, wherever you are. Um, and so now, please join me in welcoming Nikki and Simon Haas. They will join us on the stage first and just provide a very quick overview of their work to familiarize you. And then we're going to show a video that uh, is playing upstairs in the gallery as well about their collaboration with the Haas sisters. And then we will all come back onto the stage to chat. And uh, Matops, who is one of the women, will come up and join us. Um, and so I want to welcome you guys. I want to welcome Matops and Kate Carlisle, Evelyn Nangumso, and Nanzele Seiko. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Um, we're so proud and so excited to be here to, uh, to show you guys this project that has been going on for two years and it's been really, really life-changing for us. Um, and uh, I don't think we could be any happier about where we are showing it. It's fantastic. Um, and uh, to get started, I just want you guys to, we'll roll through a few of our um, older works so you can get a sense of uh, where we came from and uh, what, what we're doing now. So. We're known for, um, in general, sort of being experimental with materials, but also very playful with our forms, and we love anthropomorphic objects. Um, here you can see some examples of ceramics that look sort of like they came from underwater, or, and then a little toy beast. Uh, the beast is made from goat fur and uh, ebony horns, and the ceramics have a, a texture on them that we developed as well that actually sort of grows itself. Um, and uh, here I think you can see that we really appreciate kind of gnarly but also beautiful things, uh, and we, we don't shy away from uh, even the bald spots there on the ceramics there uh, to us are, are a part of the process and we, um, we really embrace it. Uh, here another set of ceramics. Again, I think you can see a mix of gnarly and then very fine with the sort of gold detailing. 
And here, a great example of uh, Nikki's amazing ability to be expressive and um, put humor into our work. Nikki sculpts everything. I'm usually the materials guy, so um, these are a pretty distilled version of Nikki's uh, humor and, uh, and sort of energy. Here, a grouping of candelabras and vases, uh, also completely sculpted by Nikki, and then uh, some more some more of uh, ceramics with, with the accretion texture. Us uh, inhabiting the, a space with some of these animals, we made a gigantic dromedary. Uh, this one was named Debbie Harry Dromedary. Uh, Harry spelled H-A-I-R-Y. Uh, and we, so we, we love to throw in jokes and, um, in, our, in our names and uh, never take it way too seriously. So this leads us to the Afriques which is uh, the collection you'll see upstairs. I think it's completely different than anything we've ever made, but also uh, is based in this love for anthropomorphic objects, uh, emotions, attitudes. Uh, I think um, this is the most expressive collection we've ever uh, produced. Um, and it was completely, <laughs> they're great. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm saying that too because, because uh, because the, our sisters designed them with us and created, uh, surprised us in so many ways with, um, with the, the ways uh, that they, their techniques, beating techniques, the expressiveness in them. Um, it was a full on collaboration from the very start. Uh, well, we, just, we started like a language, I think you can see sort of in like the mini beast before that was expressive and funny and cool and had humor and also maybe asked questions about what it was that you were interacting with. But the reality is when we met the sisters and got familiar with the way that they worked, the work went to a completely different place that is at the same time more casual, more humorous, more unusual, um, but, but also more impactful and has a heavier, deeper, more serious meaning behind it than we were working on our own. And I think it was the first time that we had moved into something where we were proud not only of our message, because in the past we've been proud of the things we make and the things that we're trying to say, but this was like the interaction, the work of the project, the, 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 the benefit that was held by everybody involved was so much deeper seated and so much more life-changing than anything we embarked on before. And I think that we are so extremely proud of this work because you can feel that as a part of it. And it completely changed our aesthetic, and we were at a place before we started making this collection where I think we were probably pretty happy with ourselves for a moment. We felt pretty good. Like literally the day before we went to first work with these guys, we were in New York. We just had our first solo show, which was a tremendous success. We'd sold a lot of work um, and we got a lot of press for it. And so I think we felt pretty excited about it. Um, and then we went to Kailicha and, uh, I mean to, to Cape Town and uh, and I think we totally got knocked on our ass, man. And it made us totally reassess what it really meant to be making work. Um, so this wasn't just like, hey, let's go make some aesthetically unusual pieces. And oh, we want to add color to our work, so let's go to Africa to do it. That's not the approach at all. I think maybe initially it had a little bit of that. Well, no, I mean, it's like we were just stunned by, when we went to Cape Town, we were stunned by the work that we saw at Monkey Biz, and uh, we're... Uh, that all we wanted to do is, is start working with them, but we didn't actually know what was going to happen until we went. Um, and uh, the collection that resulted was just um, pretty outrageous. I, these mushrooms, for example, are eight feet tall. Um, that's an incredible amount of beating. It's, uh, it's a, a huge feat, and, and uh, it, it was just really great for us to, um, to be involved in doing that. I, I, uh, I can't stress how much of a collaboration it was, and it's actually the first time that I can say that we've really collaborated with, with anybody in a, a full, uh, in a full sense, um, and uh, so we're very excited about it. And after this, I want to show you guys a quick video um, that gives you a sense of the project, and then I, I think we will have a little talk.
We were excited, since Nikki has always drawn such remarkably expressive characters, to make completely invented animals. Not even animals, really, just freaks. We had this idea that we could embrace the title of freak, as it is such a non-specific title. The word means anything really unusual or unexpected. But it is bandied by bullies around the world to diminish anyone they deem to be weird. This derisive blanket term, taken at its actual definition, is a fantastic set of constraints for a design project. We wear the title of freak, as I have come to wear the title queer, with pride, and assign its literal meaning to ourselves and to the objects we wish to create. Unexpected, abnormally shaped, surprising, out of the blue. To us, these terms all sound pretty cool. We want to make beautiful freaks. We christen the series Afreaks. We were excited, since Nikki has always drawn such remarkably expressive characters, to make completely invented animals. Not even animals, really, just... Can our, can our sisters stand up for a second oh, so yeah. everybody can see who we worked with on this project? All you guys can see. Yeah. Thank you. 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 These are, these are just five of, of about 30, 35 women that worked on the project with us. And, and these, are, these are the ones that we that, that started the project with and uh, we're, we're definitely powerhouses inside of the, of the system that we use to create it. So, uh, so I think we'd like to invite Andrea back on yes. stage um, and Mata uh, Pela. up here. Ed Matoff, thank you for joining us up on stage. Um, so first of all, I, I mean, your work is incredible anyway, but how did, how did it even come to be that you guys met each other? Um, we, we went up in Cape Town as, uh, well Cape Town was named World Design Capital in 2014 and our gallery, our own company, brought us there to exhibit in a booth that they had there. Um, and Nikki and I started walking around Cape Town and just uh, happened across a fair called Design in Daba. And inside of the fair, uh, Monkey Biz had a booth. And we began a conversation with Joan from there. Uh, she's not here today, but... Um, uh, and she suggested that we start collaborating with each other. Uh, and we were blown away by the work in the booth, so we thought it was an amazing idea. Uh, and. From there on, it just the rest is history. That was two years ago. Maybe all the no, story here liked, liked each other and we sort of vibing and like, hey, this is cool. Maybe we can do something. And I think there were like emails back and forth where it was like, yeah, I don't know if like like I don't know if, if you guys necessarily believed that we would do something initially. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, oh, two like young American guys come in and they're sort of like, yeah, let's do something. And I don't know if we believed it ourselves initially, but then we started talking. I was just like, dang, man, this is really cool and we could do something rad, and, and there wasn't necessarily um, like a goal to, to what we were doing uh, until we met with you, Andrea, because then we had a finish line, mm -hmm. you know? Then you say, oh, you just Smithsonian Design Museum, holy shit, all right, <laughs> like, uh, let's do something, and then you asked us to do something transgressive, yeah. and I'm, I'm only projecting, I don't know what you're what you were hoping we would do necessarily, but but like uh, Simon and I are known for our hypersexual work, and I thought we were thinking, oh, maybe it has something to do with sexuality. And we're like, well, if we're supposed to do transgressive, we shouldn't do what's expected of us at all. Um, and so it just ended up being sort of like this perfect storm where we're like, man, those awesome ladies from Cape Town can totally nail this, and let's do it together. And lo and behold, they they totally did. They did something that stands up across the world and in a, in a reality that they hadn't experienced until even just a week ago and they somehow found the language that has changed the scene I think in a way permanently um, uh, it's it's nothing short of miraculous pretty awesome yeah. 
Anyways, that's how we that's how we met each other. And how is it for you, Matthew? Actually, uh, for 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 me and the uh, the artist and the monkey bees is absolutely amazing because you know we've been. Uh, we are 15 years in in, the, in in monkey bees, but actually there are some people that they just come to say, guys, let's collaborate, let's collaborate, let's do this. So sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. So actually, this is the very first one that it was blown away, and it's totally amazing. Yeah. And it just takes us into into another level yeah. because we do like other uh, like artworks, but now this is like it's it's amazing. We really couldn't believe that we can do this uh, a beautiful work. It's so amazing to work with these brothers. They are just amazing. Well, and so what is your your process of collaboration? Tell me more about how you work together. Uh, well, it started. With, oh, sorry. Do you want to do you want to say? Well, it started by um, we just asked if uh, if they would all start to sort of experiment with uh, textures and. Um, before we got there the first time, actually, they had already prepared all of these amazing little samples uh, with little tongues and things hanging out, and um, gagala goo goo is what, what we're calling it, this um, sort of scrunchy texture. Um, and so when we arrived, we were really inspired by uh, what they had already produced. Uh, and then um, Nikki sat down with everybody and just started drawing uh, while they taught me how to bead. And uh, it was, I don't know, it's hard to even say um, uh, who made what in, 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 in terms of the design choices. Uh, it was so collaborative and so much just us um, hanging out together that uh, that's yeah. kind of what was the entire experience. Well, even in the initial textures, like the first time we came to work, they had put up in the studio like photos of stuff that we would made in the past. And then uh, inspiration images. Kate, I know you pulled like weird mushrooms and some other stuff that we like had related to the work we'd made before. And uh, there were even some photos of us and they had already started to make work that that uh, like sort of related to, to, to our uh, aesthetic, which was awesome. I even remember like the photos of us, like we came in and I don't know if Evelyn, if you asked me, someone was like, you don't have breasts. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And then I looked at the photo that they had of me, and I'd been at a fair, and there was just like really bad light over me, and I had this white t-shirt on. And I was like, well, I can see why you think I would have that photo. <laughs> and so it was like literally like we had had so little interaction, and we'd all sort of taken this massive leap of faith just to get started. And coming from both sides, I mean, they had started making work that, that I mean, I, I, I don't know, like working on our aesthetic, who knew, knew what was gonna happen? And then we flew to, to South Africa, like not even really understanding the place at all. And it was like, I think that's what made it so successful, is that we all had hope together before we even became friends. And we all went through a massive growing experience that was at times super difficult and other times so joyful and unbelievable and that the result is like like these objects are sort of like all our children together yeah. and they're really just a product that is like a perfect example of um, the real work of the project which was which was getting to know each other and reaching across the ocean to meet each other and all that other hippie hippie uh, <laughs> crap that I like to talk about but uh, that was the real work of the project, was, was us getting to know each other and, 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 and share cultures with each other. Yeah. And I just like, when we started really, I just had to choose for the very best artists because we are, there are so many. So it was like, I think we started with like four, until now we have like plus minus 35 artists that are working in this project. But at the beginning we started with a small, then as I, Nikki says, we do some samples, then I have to, then we see the, the work is growing. They say, oh, maybe we can extend, we can make another one. Then I started to look for the people that they can come so can be, uh, the, the artists, they can increase. And it was like amazing. And Kate, she was one who was like, emailing back. So it was like <coughs> back and forth of the emails to say, oh, then when we're just making, maybe it's like halfway, they're gonna just get some pictures and, and send it away. So it was incredible. And the artists, they believe themselves, they just like, they couldn't believe that they can able to produce this artworks. Uh, uh, 
I was gonna say, I just, I don't know if, if, like, I know that none of you guys will be able to tell, but it's like we, um, like, we, uh, Simon and I can tell exactly which sister made which piece because the, their, their voice is so succinct and so smart and beautiful. And uh, like, like Evelyn and Nongamso and Nongsu Seiko have pieces upstairs that they specifically worked on the pieces. And it's like, there's some that are like group efforts and the, the, the voice is more of like a community in that case, like the larger pieces, but the little toys you go, I know who made that because I know their aesthetic and I know how they would work with that with the pieces that we worked on together, which is really, really cool. Well, and some of them even have names after. Yeah. Right, yeah. Exactly. Really, because each and every piece have like an artist name, so. Yeah, like, well, Simon and I name our pieces often, like we, we started by like making dumb celebrity names. There's another collaborator in the house too, Johnny Smith, <laughs> back there somewhere. <laughs> He's there. He made it. Uh, good. Yeah. So Johnny will like we'll all sit together and make like like uh, like celebrity name puns. Yeah. Taylor yeah. Swift was Taylor one. Taylor yeah. Swift. Because yeah. it had a tail. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Well, my, my favorite. Uh, my favorite was like a little bit obscure. I'm a huge. Uh, I love ice hockey, and my favorite goalie of all time was Martin Bruder. He plays for the New Jersey Devils, and there was one piece that was called. Fartan odor, which is like <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because everyone's like, what does that mean? Fart and odor, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but what was even cooler is that all the, the sisters have all their, their names for the pieces as well. And, and, and there are several other pieces after the sisters too, as, as we started to get to know each other. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's really great. The naming was cool. It was really fun. Because it, it, yeah, it's, it's a, it was a super good project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that yeah. And yeah, so it was really a super uh, project that we ever made, and just changed the life of the artist. Yeah. It's made it's like it's beyond. Yeah. And we're super excited to have the work upstairs. I mean, it's interesting because two years ago, when we first approached you guys to participate <laughs> in the triennial, we had no idea yeah. <laughs> what this was. Yeah. yeah what was going to come of this and. Uh, and I remember we had some talks about, yeah, that idea of transgression, and, and then you came to the museum and showed us some early sketches of some of kind of the beating algorithms mm -hmm. and things that you were working on. Um, tell me a little bit about those. The beating the algorithms. Yeah. So um, uh, they, on some of the pieces upstairs, you'll see there's some floral bits, like little flowers and uh, leafy foliage. Uh, this, uh, I got so obsessed by beads as a result of this project um, uh, that the sisters all taught me how to do bead work and actually based on some of the necklaces that we taught today in the, um, in the workshop, uh, I developed a system um, for making three-dimensional shapes using, uh, using just logic. Um, so, uh, for example, it, you, could, you could say on a flat tapestry, maybe a red line will be moving in this direction and a blue line is moving in this direction and when they hit each other one bead gets removed that's one of one of uh, the examples um, and that'll create sort of like a tapering spiral shape um, but uh, I came up with 26 of these uh, 26 unique stitches uh, each one makes its own three-dimensional shape and uh, they can be permuted with each other to uh, to create those flower shapes uh, that you see upstairs so um, the, the, to me, even though it wasn't, um, uh, it's, it was very much kind of a personal passion project that was on the sidelines, uh, it was completely, um, it would have been absolutely impossible to make that leap uh, from sort of thinking mathematically the way I do into uh, sort of more of a, an abstract math and a linguistic math. And it's because I was trying to learn Kosa and trying to explain some of these stitches, um, I had to completely reformat the way that I think. And uh, uh, as a result, I had breakthroughs that I didn't think I could ever have. So um, I, I encourage you guys to check out those algorithms that are really, really hard to understand for most people, because uh, I'm, I'm just a kind of an obsessive, crazy guy, but. <laughs> but I love that you gave each of the 26 stitches, if you will, you assign them a letter. I did. A through Z. Exactly. It's there's, alphabet. There's 26 letters, so yeah. I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty awesome. I, yeah. can, um, I can give them letter names, but, um, yeah. So what is it about beads? <coughs> I mean, why were you so moved 
I mean, the bees. And I, I was the first one that saw these guys yeah. in Indaba, and I think the reason that I was so attracted is that I was going through Indaba hoping to see something that felt like, like, you know, unusual to me, more exotic, or African even. Honestly, we're Americans looking for something that looks like not where we're from. And a lot of South Africa, uh, a lot of the work coming out of the design community is very like Western, uh, Western engaged and uh, they, like they love making stuff that looks Western. And I'm like, all right, it's really good. They make great stuff, but I want to see rad African stuff. When I came across their booth, I was like, this stuff is awesome. And then you meet the women making it, and you go, holy shit, they're awesome. They really get it, man. And so for us, I think it was just like this insane aesthetic, then backed by this tremendous spirit and this like this like beautiful community. And additionally with beads, I think we were both really struck by um, uh, you know, our work is all very intense. Uh, we spend lots and lots of time making every piece. Uh, and when we when we saw these objects, um, we were like, wow, these take at least as long as the things that uh, that we make. Um, and uh, ultimately, we're selling our stuff in galleries in New York for uh, all this money, blah blah blah. But there, we should we really thought that um, that beadwork. Uh, could use a boost because it is such a beautiful art uh, and such a um, such an intricate art uh, that to 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 see it um, uh, be treated sort of as a, a craft and well it is a craft but you know some people have a problem uh, even putting craft in such a, a high end place so actually I commend you for allowing us to put. Uh, beadwork in in this design museum it's really incredible um, but uh, I think it's a craft that really could have, could use the boost and we we were uh, we were also excited to to do that I mean, Tubbs, your mom taught you yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelin, right yeah uh, my mom she actually is the one who made the first doll of monkey bees when it was started oh. that's the original yeah. and um, it, it expand when um, if I know I'm gonna pass out to a friend but my mom taught a lot of the artists how to do beadwork. And in, in, in the beadwork, most of the people from, um, f they, they know the beadwork from the background, like uh, history of uh, beadwork. But we, we contemporary in monkey bees. We just uh, taking uh, beadwork into contemporary instead of uh, like casual. And we are the one, we are the unique project. The way we do bead, no one do like us. Oh, it's okay. unique. Yeah. How and it's made in, 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 it's made in South Africa. It's not original from somewhere, it's original from South Africa. Yeah. And, and tell me more, I mean, what do beads mean to you, ultimately? I mean, your mother taught you to bead. You're wearing the most incredible beaded necklace. Did you make that, by the way? I didn't, and I didn't read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I didn't read it, yeah. Uh, you know, beadwork it's mean, uh, it means a lot to, to me, actually, because as we started Monkey Bees, because it's a project that is it's uplifting, it's uplifting the community. Actually, uh, some of the artists, they didn't know that they can do something with their hands that they can live from. So the beads means a lot. And we, 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 we not, we're not doing a traditional beadwork, but we do modern uh, beadwork. Yeah but it's just like unique and the way we, we run that project and we have like um, time when we have like the people they have to bring the artworks to us, we call it a market day. It's where each and every artist have a, um, a banking account. Immediately, it's not like in the gallery where we have to wait for payment. Immediately the person bring the work to us, then we give them, uh, uh, they get paid into their bank account. So this project actually just like beyond because the people they were working in the office every day, so they were getting like a salary. So it was really, it's improved a lot. Yeah. Well, and I have to say, as far as just the beadwork that you see upstairs, the most incredible textures that you're able to get. I mean, it looks like hair. You want to pet these things. Although we keep telling visitors, do not touch the objects. That was so cool. And then the day of the opening, say, oh, we made this. this. Don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Buy a monkey biz piece in the gift shop, because then yeah. you can touch all you want, and it's like the best texture of all time. They are, it is a really tactile experience, and we designed them that way, too. Like uh, the, the mushrooms have, for example, these these um, sort of filaments in them that you can brush your hand around in it, and it's uh, curtains of beads that are really loose. Um, 
there's a there's like a proboscis on one of the animals upstairs that Evelyn left really floppy, and you can uh, bat it, and it kind of like swings around. And, but don't do that. No, no, don't. That's what I'm only doing for you. Yeah. It's really amazing because we just like we used to make our products at home in Cape Town, but now we're here, it's really amazing. Some of us, it's the first time to, to fly, and it's really it's incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you guys got manicures and pedicures oh, one day. Oh, yeah. and we go <laughs> watch the show, the pep. Oh, and you went ice skating? Yeah, we went ice skating. Oh man, the color purple was we incredible the color purple too. Oh. So we did a lot. Yeah, yeah. We ice skated. In seven a, days. <laughs> we did the Rockefeller Center ice rink, which was so much fun. <laughs> What's been your favorite part about being here and a part of this whole experience? I think it's where I watched the, the show. Yeah. That was my... The oh, color purple, purple. yeah. Awesome, yeah. It was yeah. awesome. And we walked, so we walked the, the, the Brooklyn Bridge, oh, it was chilly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did you have to get winter jackets when you came here? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we never used to this uh, cold in Cape Town, actually. So. <laughs> yeah. And boots off, especially today. Ooh. Brutal out there. So, uh, also tell me, because now, I mean, you guys have taken on this loving term, the Haas Sisters. How did that come about? That happened in, in you guys' the studio, didn't it? It was yeah. your invention. Yeah. Actually, we were just in the studio, then we just, because they, we, they are Haas brothers, then we just said, okay, we just tried it and we said, okay, if you call them uh, like Haas brothers, what about pay family? Maybe you can be Haas sisters. Then we just love each other. Then we like, then we'll laugh about this. They will say, oh, Haas sisters. They just, oh, well, it's great. Then, yeah. It's and like simple. Like this like, flag, this beaded flag, it says, Haas sisters, heart, Haas brothers. And it was like, oh, yeah, that was so awesome. Because we were leading the amazing. Yeah, yeah, near the end of the project. So yeah. Yeah. I was like a tearjerker. For it was. It was. <laughs> And, and it really was that the, the name is appropriate because we really did become a family and, and in the you know in studio while we were working it we were um, we would be singing and like dancing all the time and um, actually at the end of this that we should show you a dance because it's there's a great oh, element yeah. of yeah. 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 for sure yeah yeah I love when you guys came in for the first time when we were uh, finishing up with the installation and you got to see the video and the music, and there was just this spontaneous eruption of dance in the gallery. It's just so fantastic. Which was a big part of it, too. And, you know, Matapelo, um, in her free time, like, very busy, by the way, you work so much, but, but somehow in your free time, she uh, uh, has a, a program called Tabang, which means happiness in Kosa, and she, um, she uh, teaches kids dance in her neighborhood, and... Um, it's a, it's such a beautiful thing. So we got to go experience that too, and it really filtered into um, the the project for us. Kids of every age to keep them off the streets so they don't get into trouble doing other other yeah. bad stuff. So and it's like the most positive thing that I've ever experienced. Oh, Same here. Yeah. She runs it out of her garage. It's like she's so generous with her own <laughs> space. It's insane. And the reason why I started is because uh, I love the cultural dance that I used to do when I was uh, young called Bukhuigo, is a Sutu dance. So when we're in Cape Town, we, just, we are away from the, uh, the rural area, we are in the city. So you're not going to be able to see that. So I just, because I loved it so much, I wanted to carry it on, so. I know, that comes to the world. Yes. is hands down one of the most insane, miraculous women I've ever met. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So, what's next? I mean, you guys fly home tomorrow, back to tomorrow morning. We'll be you have to wake up at 6.30? <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe you'll miss it. <laughs> 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 it's an excuse of staying, though. You can miss it. Yeah. But the project is continuing. Uh, we the uh, so far it's been really successful, and we did um, we presented some of uh, some similar pieces in Miami, and they they sold really well. And uh, knowing that means we get to continue and, and already have some commissions rolling in. So um, I I only see our family growing bigger and us having more and more projects. Um, it's it's a 
I think it's a sustainable, wonderful thing. This is amazing to hear those great news. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. We about a year or two of work. I'm pretty sure. But I, I, going the way the project's going, it should last longer, too. Oh, that's great. So, good. I think at this point, shall we open it up for questions before we break into oh, yeah, dance? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, sorry, we'll just wait for the mic. We've got okay. people live stream. I did a workshop earlier, and uh, and Simon told a great story about how when you first started this thing, the first thing that you guys did was uh, put them on a salary. And maybe you can talk about that and how I'd love to hear from the house sisters too about how that changed things and what that freedom it enabled them for you know creative ideas. Well, we we thought it would be a, a great thing to um, you know in general it's. Uh, payment by piece, uh, you make a piece and bring it in and sell it as in a gallery. Uh, and since we were um, asking the sisters to be experimental with their work, we thought, um, why not put them on salary and give, uh, you know, that gives you the freedom to be a little more experimental with your textures and spend longer on them, for example. Um, so I think it was essential uh, to this project. Um, yeah, and, and, and it made a, a really, really big difference. I, I know that it made a big difference for all of you guys, but I, I, um, I maybe you want to say something about that too? I think it was helpful. Actually, it made a huge impact because uh, some of the ladies there are like the breadwinners, which they don't have their husband. So the children, they are at school, so they can able to pay things. They can able to be like really uh, um, the breadwinner in their family. And as well, they were working from the office, so it was, for them as well, it's just like something new and something that is very nice, because we normally working from home, it's, uh, it's incredible. So everyone really that work in this project, it changed their lives. Well, and I love too the story that um, you even included like those discs, for instance, that some of the women who aren't able to come into the workshop or the studio are able to make from home. Can yeah, you talk exactly. about that? Yeah, Kate and I were in the studio uh, with these big dunes and, and thinking about how to, we had designed some ideas and then we were thinking about how to make um, how to, uh, make the biggest impact and uh, we thought, why don't we cover them in, in tiles that can be made from home. So um, the sisters who weren't able to work with us, uh, it just increased the number of people who were able to work on it. Um, which which uh, is really important. We want to put as uh, everybody uh, should be as many people as inclusive as possible. Um, so there's a big yellow and red uh, sort of mountainous shape upstairs that you'll see that has that, and then there's one more very rainbowy, um, stripy one. And the strips were also made from home and then applied. Uh, so uh, I think actually in the future I'd like to build even more of those types of things into the project. Any other questions? Vicky and Simon, could you talk about how working with these women and um, the cultural experience that you had and the emotional experience that you had has influenced other kinds of design and artwork that you might be thinking about working on now or what you're going to do next that comes out of this that's different from the beating project? Um. You know, I don't know if we've talked about which which future projects there will be, um, but it has changed everything about our practice. Um, it, I don't know. I think that the two of us realized um, just what how happy somebody can be when we went to Cape Town. We were both uh, Nikki touched on a little bit earlier, but we were flying so high, um, you know, on our egos actually before before ever going to Cape Town. Um, uh, that I, I think that's that's a pretty it can be a really dangerous path um, and once we went there we recognized our level level of privilege we we felt our privilege not just uh, not just intellectualizing it um, and uh, it it threw us both for such a loop um, I don't think we ever could have imagined that any project would be quite as emotional as this one was um, 
and continues to be. I like want to cry every day when I think about it. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, I, there's no way for me to make anything from this point forward without uh, considering all of those aspects of reality and not just uh, aesthetics and, and not just, um, you know, where can I go from here? It's, uh, it, there's so much more to focus on. Yeah, for me too. I mean, for me too, it's just like totally, it, it changed my philosophy of how I want to make work uh, just because it became much less um, like, like thinking about how I could affect just our immediate group of people or impress um, our peers around us, it became more about being responsible and using the work to try in some way to make some kind of difference um, and to try to lessen this, uh, or just level the playing field, just to be fair. And while making work to not intellectualize it to a point that isolates anybody, to open it up that art or design becomes accessible to anybody and everybody. So it's not necessarily even like an aesthetic change in the way that we think. I mean, for sure that's happened just because of you're gonna be affected by everything around you. And, and South Africa is such a crazy looking place and it's so beautiful. And, um, but, but it's definitely just been like, I mean, Simon and I's relationship is so different from it, uh, now than it was when we started on the project. Yeah, and, and that, way. oh man, God, that, that, it would, <laughs> I'd say a year into it, halfway through, Simon and I like never fight really, and we had this like knock down horrible fight, and it was because we were grappling with the idea of being American white males, and you go through a moment where you go, uh, what the hell? I'm given so much, and then you go through this moment where you go like, do I deserve any of this? And then you have a moment where you go, okay, like I do deserve it. Um, because I'm working really hard, but at the same time, yes, a lot of it was given, but I feel like I'm doing well with it. So, and yeah. and it's like, of course, the first person, like, if I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to be like, screw you, get out of, you know, I'm going to say that to the person I care about most. Uh, my fiance did it too, she knows what I was going through when, when that was happening. It's like, you strike out against the people that you care about most when you are going through a huge revelation. And so it's like, like when we're saying that everybody on the project is different than when it started and has been affected, everybody on the project. I don't think there's anybody that's been a part of this. I hope you feel that way too, yeah, to yeah, an extent. Yeah. It's uh, it just, I don't know. I go into my office, into our studio in the morning, and I sit down and I go, <laughs> I don't give a shit about any of this. And I also care so deeply at the same time. It's just a total momentum shift. It's just like, my day to day for me personally has been about like each step that I take forward and then each step that we decide to take forward together and then each step that all of us together take forward is about moving towards something that isn't just like an ego play or isn't just like a, let's get bigger for the sake of getting bigger. It's a, it's a like how can we how can we keep this as positive as possible? And and that's the biggest change I think and, and you know these, these guys were already doing that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, and, uh, but it was, you know, it was huge for us. Like, yeah. we totally canned it before we went to South Africa. We were here, we had our solo show. We were staying in our friend's, like, you know, penthouse apartment on the Hudson River. And we were, like, taking ecstasy and bouncing around. And, like, and then uh, you go to South Africa the next day and you go, I'm a brat. You know what I mean? Like, I need to get my shit together and be happy for what we have in front of us. And, you know, like, like uh, I think that's, that was the biggest change. And so we fought because we were dealing with, we were dealing with, the, with the things that we had done that we felt like we needed to do differently. And I feel like you see that transformation in the work upstairs. It is so incredibly joyful to see those objects. I mean, everyone who walks into that pink gallery absolutely just stops and loves it and responds so much to each of each of those objects which is really incredible so i think i think you see that itself in the work definitely i mean it was all about joy if if, yeah. if there's one thing that's consistent um between forms and colors or anything joy is like the the only consistent thing and it's because that's what we felt the entire time we were doing it so. yeah. Well, and I think, I, you know, maybe we can actually just bring one of these up onto oh, the table yeah. or something. You guys have to see these yeah. because actually we were surprised 
uh, when, when, when they came from <laughs> South Africa this time, uh, they brought us as gifts these two uh, that Nikki and I had absolutely nothing to do with, uh, except <laughs> that, that we just received them. And they're so beautiful, um, but it's really amazing to see uh, after this collaboration the way that we've influenced each other and that this thing, this <laughs> amazing thing was born out of it. Yeah, um, yeah it's just incredible. <laughs> and you guys had nothing to do with the form. I mean, you guys yeah, sculpted yeah. the whole thing, wow. did all Susan. of it, yeah. And uh, the, the brothers wanted us to name them. Actually, they even know the names. When we're sitting up there, we're just discussing what they, we're going to call them. Yeah. Because of this dancing and music, so we call them, this is going to be Amayeye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this one, he loved uh, dancing Amayeye, and this one's going to be Juju. 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 Oh. He loved Juju. <laughs> Actually, speak nonsense. Can we, yeah. Okay, guys, can you show them Amayeye? Yeah. 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 Get up here, come on. We'll do it with you. Here. Oh, uh, I'll do it with you guys. just had, I mean, we know what we're going to do with, with it, but we, we just had a conversation about it, so we can't quite. Um, but our, but our, it's being organized through our gallery, and uh, it's uh, essentially to um, uh, to benefit, uh, sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, going, it's going directly into Monkey Biz, and then, and then to, to, to the people involved. So, um, and, and we work with an NGO here in New York so that we can donate directly with very minimal pull-off of... Uh, off of that money, uh, so that there's not, um, we, we did a lot, well, it's hard to explain, but it's, <laughs> it's, 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 gonna, it's gonna go directly, that's the point. And then as far as teaching, I, we would love to teach uh, in the US, and we just got to do our first workshop here actually, so that was really great, um, and it was wonderful, everybody did such a good job, and it was so much fun. Uh, and I'm, I'm particularly interested in trying to, to teach uh, the beating methods that I came up with during this project, but. Um, that might have to be like a college course. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> too much. Very logic driven. Uh -huh. <laughs> Could I tell we had another question back here? Yes. Yeah. 
This is a little off topic to the Hot Sisters, but the pieces that you showed prior to working with this project, you talked about some texture and you said that it grows. So yeah. I'm wondering what it's so, made of. Uh, it's made of ceramic and it grows. Um, it's a, so uh, there's in ceramics, you can have a very watered down clay called slip. Um, and basically you just take a brush dip it in the slip and paint it onto a vessel in thousands and thousands of layers with a pretty specific stroke and the texture will just grow, uh, this sort of fur texture. You, uh, you saw it in the slides, but um, it doesn't grow by itself because a human hand is involved, but all that the hand is doing is this, which I think is really exciting. So I like anything that can do that. And the beads, uh, the bead programs that I worked out also essentially grow. Uh, it's kind of my obsession. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Bad right, guys, right. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs>